What's up nerds, welcome back to The Raging Rainbow. My name is Dylan doing a comic book review for Moon Knight number one from Marvel. And I have to say, this is one of those books that I was pleasantly surprised by. Like I said, I was worried when I bought this because Marvel has, yeah, they have like the series coming out. Well, really, it's more Disney. Disney has the series coming out to Disney Plus, Moon Knight. And so I was already kind of worried about it because anytime they have something that's coming out tied to either a show or a movie, it's usually trash. So I was already kind of worried. But then I got this because for one thing, I'm just a Moon Knight general, I mean, fan in general, but... I was I was willing to pick it up and check it out just because like the show is coming out so I wanted to see what are they going to do with him in the comics if they're starting over with a number 1, right? So what they actually did here was somewhat interesting and I'm kind of I kind of want to see where it's going to go. So we start out with him in this uh white suit getup that we saw in the last, well, not the last. I think it started in the series before last. I have it here collected somewhere i have my issues or whatever the hell but he says uh, welcome to the midnight mission my name is mr knight how can i help so basically he started sort of like he says it's a mission it's almost kind of like a religious type of thing but i mean he doesn't well you'll see so we start out with these these victims well this one guy who's saying like look this is all real weird but people say that when something weird is going on you're the guy to uh talk to so people have been going missing on my block and then he just tells them i'll look into it so we cut from there to where he's looking into it and all of a sudden he's encountering this van that's being driven by vampires and they have their like victims in the back but they're not going to feed on them they're actually taking them somewhere else because they are initiates getting ready to become full-fledged vampires or whatever and so that's kind of what they're talking about here. He says, like, okay, baby vampires, here we go. It's time. You remember we brought you subwords into the... You remember how we brought you subwords into the structure? Now it's your turn. So he's saying, like, once you pull in and you recruit and turn them, they'll be your subwords. And then you'll reach Omicron level. So that's when they're saying like you know we just want to go home or the the like black girl that's in the back is saying like we just want to go home or whatever but then we can see in from the windshield that moon knight is flying towards them so things are about to go from bad to worse at least for the vampires and it says remember what the tutor says it's your moments if you can seize it yeah it's if you're it's your moment if you can seize it and then the other one's like hey what is that and i'm kind of confused that he's having trouble seeing him because like it's you're a vampire and it's nighttime shouldn't you be able to see exceptionally well i don't know if that's a thing for all vampires but i'm just gonna assume that it is so we get this pretty nice splash page of him crashing through and saying what nice night so he crashes through there and we see this part where like the van is like flipping over and everything again pretty pretty well done like this all felt very believable i felt like the weight of the van literally like turning over and hitting the street as it was doing this and then one of them gets out and runs away and he says what was that some kind of and then we hear the vo we see the voice coming from moon knight where he says i warned you i warned all of you i paint my symbol on the walls for two reasons the first is so people know that they're safe my people the people traveling at night he says the second a warning and then that's where we kind of get this like shot of one vampire seeing the other vampire's skull so we can see one of them is already clearly dead so he says that and then he says this is my territory this is my congregation this is my mission i'm the moon knight so he just kind of like gives him that and like i said this is pretty well done I, I was actually pleasantly surprised this is pretty badass him in like his actual like moon knight suit and everything looks nice and then he says my warnings were there this is what happens when you ignore them so well, i guess he gets rid of that one too and then like the recruits or whatever they are initiates they're crawling out and they're saying like we need to get out of here and then he throws okay yeah, he throws both skulls towards them so 
they're like no wait we weren't with them they kidnapped us we're from this neighborhood they turned us they made us like them but we're not like them we're not killers we didn't ask for this and then she says i was a vegan before for god's sake like i don't know what that has to do with anything baby girl you're a vampire now it doesn't matter what you were before you could have been a priest for well she couldn't have been a well i'm catholic so that's for me to say but anyway, um, we cut over to where, if you will remember, this is a modern day comic and just about oh, 75% of all modern day comic book characters, superheroes in the West are in therapy. So he's in therapy right now talking to this new therapist who apparently was referred to him by the Avengers and they apparently pretty strongly like suggested it to her. I can't remember where she mentions it in here. But yeah, she says that he basically was the Avengers who kind of like offered the job to her and asked if she would help him out. So they're kind of sitting here talking and he's saying like, yeah, you know, I let the vampires go because they were innocent people. You know, they had been kidnapped and turned by some vampiric self-actualization pyramid scheme cult. They were also travelers at night and they needed my protection. So that's where she starts talking about like, you know, his religious duty or whatever. And she asks if he started a church, but then he tells her, he corrects her by saying it's a mission. He says, I am the high priest of Khonshu. And then she says, but aren't you Jewish? Isn't that a contradiction in terms? So he says, my father was a rabbi. I was a war criminal. So if his father was a rabbi and his mother wasn't Jewish, then well, no, technically he doesn't have to be Jewish because the way that it works, at least like spiritually, you can be Jewish if you want. But as far as like bloodline or whatever, if your mother isn't Jewish, you technically aren't considered Jewish. So I guess that's why he made that distinction and saying like his father was a rabbi. That's why he's kind of known as being Jewish. That would kind of make sense. But anyway, she says, um, let's go over that. Mark Spector, U.S. Marine Corps, CIA, and then private military contracting, mainly throughout Africa and South, South America. So then he has to like clear her up and be like, private military, military contracting, please don't sanitize the facts on my account. I was a bad man who did bad things to people in foreign countries for money. So, yeah pretty much like he said that's what it was but i mean we didn't really have to make the distinction i'm pretty sure she had at least an idea of what you were doing while you were working as a private contractor in africa and south america i'm pretty sure she knows you weren't there to hand out loaves of bread to starving villages but anyway she says but then you went to salima in north sudan with raul bushman you grew a conscience you made a stand and went against your fellow mercenaries you died so that's where we see like this part where if you remember that's how he ended up getting the power where he died at like the foot of the statue or whatever and then then he was like blessed with the power to be the fist of conchu so that's where he says like you're right i did grow a conscience but after years of being like a bad person again and then she says uh, you claim that the egyptian god conchu brought you back to life he says correct i was given my life back in return for becoming the fist of conchu to become the traveler, the embracer, the pathfinder, the defender of those who travel at night. So she says, now, this is normally where a mental health professional might be skeptical, but I agreed to be your therapist at the request of the Avengers, so I understand that your situation is unique. You died at least twice more? So he kind of, like, fills her in on that, and then she says, may I ask you a question? He's like, yeah. She says, can you die? And he just says, I don't know. So we go from there back over to uh, his, like, office or like the mission or whatever and we can see his receptionist is the black girl from earlier so uh we cut back over to i guess him in his office taking on i guess just random people are able to walk in and tell him about problems they're having so he says welcome to the midnight mission my name is mr knight how can i help and it's this little old lady saying like that there are these animals creatures or whatever that are in her building and they come out at night they scratch at the doors they whisper such things please people are frightened they already tried to take my neighbor so he tells her like please don't worry i'll handle it so we cut back over to where we see he's he's fighting a whole army of like vermin literally vermin like the spider-man villain so he even kind of says that because one of the one of the neighbors tries to come out or whatever but he tells them to close the door and lock it and then he kicks one of them or yeah think he kicks them or just throws them out the window to their death so this is where he like stops them and he's addressing vermin directly he says i know who you are vermin one of spider-man's foes some mad science guinea pig used to be a man hates being alone now you can clone yourself good trick 
means you're never alone. He says, unless I kill all of you right now, and I can, and I will. I'm not Spider-Man. I'm Moon Knight, and I don't die. He says, I understand how losing your people hurts you, but these are my people you're trying to eat. You tried to take one of mine, I took one of yours. You can leave it at that, scurry off and keep clear of my territory, or you can test me further. So, we do get that pretty, like, cool shot, like, him, like that, giving that little speech. That was actually pretty well done. It wasn't, like, overly preachy or anything, it's just him being like, look, you came for me, I came back at you, I'm not the other heroes, like, I'm actually a little bit crazy, so maybe just kind of leave it at the fact that you took a loss right now and go somewhere else. So apparently, like, they took the the deal or whatever, and then we cut back over to him again with his therapist, but I, I don't know if she's like, she just comes over to his place all the time or if he ever goes over to her place, but she says, you know, the famous midnight mission, he says, I'm glad you like it. She says, you know, I rather do. Let's talk about Conchu. So this is where he starts kind of filling her in and saying, like, you know, I know Conchu isn't, uh, is unworthy of my worship or anyone's. I know he tried to take over the world, and it kind of has a little uh, footnote talking about Avengers 33 through 37, where they had that whole Khonshu storyline. And then he says, I know he deserves to be imprisoned wherever the Aesir are keeping him, off in Asgard, which is where he is. He says, but unworthy or not, I am his fist. I am the high priest of a god I am estranged from. I have taken on his duty as my own. Khonshu brought me back to life. His duty is my debt, and now his duty is my duty. So he, she says, a priest at odds with his God. What does that make you then? Apostate, schismatic, heretic. And he says, take your choice, I suppose. Reese, could we have some coffee, please? And then she, she there's the receptionist. She says, get, get it yourself or whatever. Yeah, get it yourself. And then we go from there to this actually pretty nice shot. I like this. Like I would actually like this without the word bubbles and everything, obviously, as just like a poster because the way that the cape is like making the moon and everything, like it just looks really nice. But he's like doing a mic check and everything. And then uh, he's going on his like rounds or whatever. And then he goes because there's apparently a villain that was trying to rob somebody, but he gets there and he's like, well, it looks like the villain isn't doing too well. So I think we're okay. So he goes and talks to the man who kind of has him subdued and at when like the villain um when eight ball notices who he is he's like oh crud moon knight listen man don't cut my face off i'll surrender because he knows i guess that he has a reputation for being insane so the guy says ah moon knight this one attacked my clinic in search of oxycontin so he says i like your style mister and then he has to correct him by saying doctor doctor and i don't know how it's pronounced it's b-a-d-r i don't know if it's pronounced badder badir I- i'm not sure I kind of want it to be badder, and you'll find out why at the end. I will kind of like make reference to that later. But anyway, he says, I had wondered when I might meet you. And, he, and then Moon Knight tells him, that's the kind of thing people say right before they take a swing at me. Do we have beef that I don't know about? And then he says, you're a fist of Khonshu, Mr. Spectre. Which should kind of creep him out because like they haven't met. You're wearing a mask, and he just called you by your last name. One of your last names. So he says, you have a sacred duty. And then he says, the Fist of Conchu, and I don't remember seeing you at the church social. So he says, consider me recently arrived from the home office and disappointed with what I see. Our God languishes in the custody of foreign deities. And what is his fist doing? Allowing vampires to exist in territory consecrated to the duty of Conchu. Absurd. Blasphemous. So he's like asking him, like, what are you? Moon wizard? Werewolf? You don't look like a mummy. Whichever of Kanchu's cronies you are, don't forget who you're talking to. He says, I'm the fist of Kanchu, high priest to the moon god. I outrank you. And so this is where he has to tell him, like, I'm only, like, there's only one person who's above me and it's not you or whatever. So anyway, we go from there back over to, again, him talking to the therapist again. And so she's asking him if he knows about this story about, uh, Kaidmon? Kaidmon? I'm not sure how it's pronounced. But he was an, uh, a monk back in the day. She's just telling like a whole story relating about how he was once seen as like being ignorant. He was never capable of like anything truly spectacular. And then one day he's visited by an angel and then he's able to write a beautiful verse and sing beautifully and everything like that. So she's telling him about all of that. And then he's like, hmm, 
this isn't about my disasso- dissociative identity disorder. This is about something else. She, so she says, your DID we can treat, but you've been in brain-to-brain contact with a god, Mark. However we define god. MRI and MEG scans show that your brain structure has been fundamentally changed by that. My specialty is dealing with superhuman menticide, cases like Jack Monroe and Rutherford Winner. Contact with something rewrote Cademan's brain, turning him from a dullard to a poet. I'm concerned about what changes you've gone through, gone through, and what changes you will go through. So that's where we go back to some more shots of him just doing, like, I liked seeing this, like, just some action shots of him doing some cool shit, like, nice touch. I liked it. So he's saying, like, you know, a previous doctor of mine told me something similar. So again, he's trying, he's reinforcing back to old stuff, he says. But when she began trying to kill me, we never followed up on it. So she, like, tells him, like, yeah, Elsa Warsame or Warsame, whatever, the dictator's daughter. Is that going to cause an issue of trust in our relationship? And he's like, I don't believe so. I've spent my life in dangerous places, dangerous situations. My paranoia has been carefully cultivated into a keenly honed tool. So... We can see where he's just like sitting in a chair outside of his office or whatever. And then he knows that someone's coming up. So he's like giving the whole spiel like, welcome to Midnight Mission. I'm Mr. Knight. How can I help? And then um, the reception is like, har har, here you go. And he, she gives him coffee. He's like, I thought I had to get my own coffee. So she says, I bought it for myself before I remembered that I don't drink coffee anymore. He's like, thanks, Reese. Uh, ugh, I'm going to be up all day. You, you know why I like you, Reese? And she says, because I'm the only person you know who's biologically compelled to keep the same schedule as you. I mean, hey, that yeah, that's a pretty fair point. She kind of is now that she's a vampire or whatever. So he's like, it's because you don't try to fix me. It's not easy when everyone thinks you're crazy. It's even harder when they're right. So that's where we see that he's being watched right now. And we see like some of the like detective work, I guess you could call it, that's being done on him. And so it says, you make me sick, Moon Knight, or Mr. Knight, or Jake Lockley, or Stephen Grant, or Mark Spector. You don't know it, but I've made a project of you, pal. Now, normally, my statements are big. Lots of flash, lots of pizzazz, lots of bodies. But you offend me. You offend me with everything you stand for. You have so much potential, but you're too intent on your crutch, your sacred duty. So for you... I'm going small, personal, bespoke. I'm going to free break your faith, Moon Knight. I'm going to show you that the only thing worth believing in is nothing. And only then, with all the precious lies you've told yourself burned to ash, will we see what you really are. So then that's where we go back over to, uh, what's his name, the pharmacist or whatever. And it says, you know, hear me, Conchu, greatest god of the great gods, you who are called Traveler, Embracer, Pathfinder, Defender. Your fist has erred. He has strayed from your purpose. Moon Knight requires correction. But I keep the faith. I enact your will. I carry out your duty. Your, Your right hand has failed you, but your left has not. Your other fist remains faithful. Your hunter's moon. So we see where he's basically going to be like the, like basically polar opposite of Moon Knight, where he's like in a black costume, but he's got like a white spot. And instead of being like the crescent moon, it's a full moon or yeah, just a hunter moon. So that's an actual thing. It's like an actual phenomenon, right? But anyway, yeah, that's, that's what we got there. And that's where it leaves off for right now. So, I mean, like I said, it, it's not perfect. It had its few parts in there. Like, like I said, I am tired of everybody using like therapy as like their 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 use of what what is it I'm even going for like where they're like explaining everything where they're really diving into everything exposition like that's their expository scenes it's always therapy now like that's where they're always getting into how they feel about things and what they really think that's where they have to examine it I'm like you can't figure out any other way to do it. You can't show us like the hero doing anything else cool or at least at vaguely interesting looking instead of sitting and talking to a therapist. I'm tired of those scenes. But thankfully, we did get some action scenes in here that were pretty well done. And that's what I'm saying. Like, 
that coupled with the fact that the story is actually somewhat interesting in, in as far as like they're bringing in this other person who is now going to challenge him and say like well you're not doing right as far as like you know for our god and everything like that so it's going to be pretty interesting i love this type of thing all of that type of like storytelling like dealing with gods and any type of mythology especially when it deals with like egyptian or norse or anything like that i love that type of like stuff so i'm willing to like look into it and see where it's going from there because like i said it, it didn't bore me and i didn't hate it so i'm willing to keep picking it up but i think that's going to do it for my review here so let me know what you guys thought about moon knight number one if you've read it i mean i'm not going to say that this is giving me high hopes for the show because i'm pretty sure it's not going to be anything like this it's probably going to do its very own thing and i'm probably not going to like it very much if the other like marvel shows are any indication so far but yeah, that's going to do it for my review here. So if you guys have read this, do feel free to let me know what you thought. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe and make sure you're always sharing so other people can subscribe. But anyway, guys, if you're done here, then go and read a book. And if not, then I will see you on my next video.